What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long-term issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, January 26, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on COVID and all the other viruses that are circulating right now, including long COVID, which is an issue that a lot of people are starting to gain after a COVID infection. It's really bad. It's a long-term illness that really can change your life. So if you want to learn more about COVID and everything else I just mentioned to help keep you safe and informed, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel down below. All right, starting off with our first news story of the day, Disturbed show postponed after Singer comes down with a sickness and looks like this is in the Des Moines, Iowa area because this is uh, coming out of Des Moines, Iowa news source. It says, in an unfortunate irony for music fans in central Iowa, Disturbed, the band made famous by the song Down With The Sickness, no, they're actually down with the sickness right now, it is postponing its Thursday show at Wells Fargo Arena due to illness. Lead singerman David Drayman will be unable to perform due to losing his voice. The show will be rescheduled for May 14th. You know, I have to say it. They're not saying the words COVID, but a lot of people, as of lately, when they're testing positive, I'm hearing this quite often. I'm seeing it on social media, I'm hearing about it on TV. Uh, when they're testing positive for COVID, they're also getting laryngitis at the same time. In other words, they're losing their voice. You have to wonder if he also has COVID at the same time. It's quite possible. All right, moving on to this. This is from Dennis, the COVID info guy. Massive COVID Massive wave of COVID infections throughout Europe. The coronavirus pandemic is spreading unchecked across Europe, causing rising death rates and pushing hospitals to their limit. Speaking of rising COVID over in Europe, yes, the Houndsdown School partly closed due to staff sickness. So apparently so many staff are sick that they had to partly, partially uh, close the school to year 10 students. They do things differently over in Europe. You know how we have grades 1 through 12. Well, they're over there they call it by year. And year 10 students will not attend school today because, well, there's so many staff that are out sick that they cannot teach the students. All right, this is a really fair warning in advance. This is a really sad story. Kindergarten student in Montgomery County, not Pennsylvania, in this case would be Montgomery County, Maryland, dies from COVID after being sent to the hospital twice. A young girl died at a Maryland hospital after suffering from the effects of COVID-19, her school district announced. On Thursday, an email was sent out to members of the community by Cannon Road Elementary School principal Kristen Donahue after a student passed away from the virus. According to Donahue, the student was admitted to the hospital last week for COVID and was readmitted before dying on Sunday, January 21st. That to me, number one, is it sad? Yes. Number two, that to me seems like you, she went from being infected to going to the hospital twice to dying in a really quick fashion. It's, it's really sad. They go on to say, as a staff we are grieving the horrific loss, she wrote. I ask that you keep her family and our staff in your prayers and thoughts during this difficult time. The principal said that the school is now working with the system to get necessary resources for students and staff as they continue working with the family about how best to move forward. Well, I can tell you one way you can move forward. You just had a student die. I think it's time that you implement a mask safety mandate in your school. Yes, and I don't mean KN95s and 95 masking or better in your school. You need to do it because you just lost a student. You don't want to lose another student. Really sad story. All right, moving on to this. New call to masks for medical visits amid surge in respiratory illness. And this is coming out of Hampton Roads, Virginia, amid a surge in respiratory illnesses, including COVID-19, RSV, area hospitals, and healthcare systems are strongly recommending that people wear masks inside hospitals, medical facilities, and physician practices. Come on, it's a no-brainer, folks. You shouldn't have to be recommended or told to wear a mask. If you're going to a medical facility, you should just do it. 
because when you're going to a medical facility, you're going to be around a lot of other people, some that may be going there because they're sick, or some that are sick and they don't even know it because they have an asymptomatic case of COVID flu or something else. The chances of you being around sickness in a medical facility greatly goes up. The best way to help you is to mask. And another way for them to help you would be HEPA air purifiers. They need to have them in medical facilities. All right, let's take a look at hospital occupancy, which just updated yesterday. In the United States, 77.9% of beds are in use. COVID-19 makes up 3.7% of them. Influenza is 1.5% of them. The number of beds in use actually went down slightly. Taking a look at the ICU, and 73.3% of ICUs are in use. 3.4% are for COVID. 1.8% are for influenza at this time. All right, moving on. Let's take a look at today's air quality values around the country. And you can see here that it is actually not all that bad with exceptions to a few areas. It'll eventually come up. And that exceptions would be right around the mid-Atlantic region. California, it's starting to build back up again, as it is in Washington, although not that bad in the Pacific Northwest. It's more than we've seen in the rest of the week. Also, the western portion of the Great Lakes, the Midwest, you're seeing a little bit of bad air quality. And look at this today. Dallas, what's going on there? Why is your air quality just so bad right now? Wow, in the hundreds. That's that's not a good thing. I'm going to have to do some investigating as to why that is. If you want to learn more about air quality, or the weather in general, or climate, I have another channel where I do that, called Climate Data Report. We have not done today's video yet. We will be doing that just right after I finish with this one. I will work on that one, and there will be a little card down below where you'll be able to check that out. All right, taking a look at some CDC data now, we can see that for wastewater, the number of red sites, you can actually physically see it on the map now. It's starting to drop, especially in Ohio. Let's zoom into Ohio. There are far less red sites now, still some red sites, still quite a few orange sites, but we're also starting to see an increase in this medium shade, which would be this real light color of blue. That's medium levels of COVID. So you can see 80 to 100% COVID detected across the United States. That's at 371 sites, and that is down by 24%. We'll have a full look at wastewater on Sunday. Uh, taking a look at this, you can see here, yeah, wastewater levels, they're still very high in some places, but not as many places. All right, speaking of wastewater, let's just do a real quick look at a couple of sites here on Wastewater Scan website. How about we go to Michigan today? Ann Arbor, Michigan. Let's see what's going on there. COVID at this time, this is, let's see, 125,000 population. COVID at this time is dropping at a good clip. It has slowed down a little bit. It's still high, though. RSV is dropping. Most recent update is up a little bit that could just be noise and it could flatten itself out on the next update it's still at high levels though influenza b is low hmpv is low norovirus is high and continuing to rise even faster that's not good mpox is low at this time with no cases being detected and let's do one more wastewater scan shall we and this time how about look at this am i seeing something i have not seen in a while yes no i don't recall there being two sites in Mississippi. This is a really good thing. Maybe I just missed this. I don't know. But take a look down here along the Gulf Coast of Mississippi. This is in Jackson County. Jackson County, only 19,008 people in this population. But what we do notice here is COVID is high. It was dropping. Then around January 2nd, started going up like a trajectory upward again. That's something we'll have to watch. RSV is high, but dropping. Influenza B is high and it's trying to rise again. That's not good. HMPV is low. Norovirus is, wow, really high, but it is dropping significantly off the peak. It was almost at 150,000 pathogens back on January 1st. And MPOX, no issues at this time. Walgreens this week. We do know the Walgreens positivity this week went up by 1.2% to 28.7%. That's because testing is down. All right, taking a look at the weekly um, deaths in the past week. Yeah, there's still quite a few deaths around the United States. I mean, Pennsylvania is seeing quite a few. New York, Maine, Kentucky is seeing still a significant increase in deaths in Kentucky. That's not good. Georgia as well. They're still going up in Arkansas, Iowa, quite a few states. You, 
you get the idea here. The Northeast states in particular and some of the Midwest states are still seeing increases in deaths. California deaths actually went down this week. And we do have new data out of California, which we will see in a little bit. Good news here on epidemic status for COVID-19. It's likely declining, declining, or stable in the entire country. No state is now either likely growing or growing anymore. That is good news. Not the same can be said for flu. It is still in bright growing status up in Vermont and in Oklahoma and still likely growing in California. Everywhere else is either stable, likely declining, or declining at a faster rate now. So you can see a state like Florida, which we will have some data from today, is declining. And that Florida data will be on COVID, not flu. Although, yes, now we will have some uh, flu data for there as well. All right, hospitalizations nationally, they did drop. 26,607. That's now down 14%. And variant data, this has not changed today. It's uh, JN.1 still at 85.7%, which is way ahead of H. B.1, which is at 5.3%. Philadelphia Fire Department yesterday reported 772 EMS incidents. And let's do a live look in and see what's going on in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Wow. Sometimes I say it's not the volume of calls, it's the type of calls. It's both right now. Uh, so there's 15 calls right now while you're thinking, well, I've seen your show higher before. True, you have, but for those 15 calls, let me read off some of them to you. Cardiac arrest bad vehicle accident not good respiratory emergency cardiac emergency another accident head injury head injury cardiac emergency stroke another cardiac emergency another stroke vomiting diabetic emergency alter mental status diabetic emergency quite a few emergencies right now and multiple strokes that's not good hopefully better news over in chester county don't think it's going to be yeah chester county chester county's a little busy right now uh sick person respiratory emergency seen a lot of emotional disorder that's not good and hemorrhaging unresponsive person unconscious person yeah not good in chester county right now as well let's go across the Delaware river over into new jersey and we'll take a look at their hospitalizations 984 people in the hospital and you're probably thinking oh that's good it dropped today it is but i'm a little concerned and i'll show you why the overall they probably still are dropping but that 984 that number I would have liked to have seen that even lower. There's now four hospitals that did not report, 66 out of 70. So I'm concerned if it was all 70 hospitals, would this have gone back over 1,000 again? It may have, but the overall trend is downward, which that is a good thing. Just this one day, I mean, 984, yes, that number's down. But again, when you have four hospitals not reporting, obviously that number would probably be higher. 46 people on a ventilator. In the ICU, 132. Number of people in the ICU continues to drop. That's good. Discharges. Hey, this is good. 153 people. Excludes deaths. So that means these are people discharged that did not die. They're, they're being let go from the hospital for COVID. Taking a look at New York State. New York State, 3,714 new cases. Taking a look at New York State hospitalizations. That number is at 2,408. All right, let's see if we can take a look at the new update from Florida. Hopefully this will come up. I've been having trouble loading this. If not, we'll try and get it into tomorrow's update. No, it's not loading. But what I wanted to tell you was that uh, Florida, so far this year, they already have over 55,000 uh, cases reported. Now, we know that is likely a significant, ma no, major undercount. But Florida, they already have 55,000 cases this year and for it only being January, I consider that to be quite a few cases. And at that rate, they're going to be on pace for the same number of reported cases that they saw last year. So that is not a good thing. All right, let's take a look at what is going on in California next. Because for whatever reason, Florida won't load. You know, Florida's just being Florida. They have a Surgeon General that is advising people not to get the vaccine. You get the idea. All right, take a look at California. California in the past week. 2,932 COVID hospital admissions. Uh, their deaths, here is actually saying their deaths in the past week went down 0.3%. COVID-19 test is down 0.1% in the last week. Influenza test, uh, the positivity rate, it actually went up a little bit. This is not good. 12.3% positivity rate. And taking a look at deaths due to influenza, they're down 
4%. And new hospital admissions. It says here there were 1,050 new hospital admissions in the past week. All right, Florida, it finally came up. Let's take a look here. And this is what I wanted to show you here. Florida, 55,000. 338 new cases and we can take a look at how many deaths they've had so far this year let's take a look at that hopefully we can get this up it's going on to please wait business but uh deaths they're already going up as well obviously deaths are lower than they were last year in florida but nonetheless deaths are still a thing there all right it's just stuck on going around we're not going to waste any more time on this let's go over to the latest update now from the cdc and take a look at what's going on with influenza i can tell you influenza levels in florida are now down to moderate you have dropped ever so slightly in tennessee you're still very high but you're that maroon color you're not that bright purple color anymore nowhere is having that purple color anymore Puerto Rico is currently low for influenza activity, and you can see here there are still some places that are high as well. Ohio is high, Texas is high, still very high in Louisiana, and that has been the case for nearly a month now. Same with New Mexico. You're now in high levels up in North Dakota. New York City continues to be very high levels for influenza. Moderate levels now in D.C. New Jersey is at high levels. California is at high levels. Washington, moderate. Oregon, minimal. And speaking of Oregon, I do have some good news, which I should have shared with you a little bit earlier. And let's just take a look at this real quickly here. Take a look at the CDC wastewater map. You're seeing something you haven't seen in a while in Oregon. Yes, more of your wastewater sites are finally reporting. I don't know what caused you to suddenly update them again, but a good number of them, which have not reported in a while, are finally reporting on the CDC site. Again, more on that on our wastewater update on Sunday. And one last check on Florida. Nope. Still spinning around in circles. And probably will be when we do tomorrow's pandemic update. That does it for today's pandemic update. If you have learned anything from this update, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel down below. If you want to share this with anyone, by all means, do so. Share this with anyone who needs to see this. If you have any comments down below, by all means, share them with me. I love to uh, read your comments. I will see you all again next time. But until I see you again next time, stay safe. Have a fantastic Friday afternoon. Thanks for watching.